fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hi! at Dry Gulch was as usual noisy and boisterous. That is, they were until the door opened and a big, tough-looking man entered. Hey, look. It's Matt Bowen. Great day. Here comes trouble. Matt Bowen walked slowly, his arms hanging at his sides, his piercing eyes surveying the crowd as they waited in hushed expectancy. Then he stopped walking and spoke. I come in here to find Sheriff Connor. Is he here? Yes, I'm here, Bolin. I saw them reward posters you plastered all over with your name signed to them, saying I'm wanted dead or alive. I got them all over the territory. Yeah, so I noticed. I don't like them. And I don't like you, Connor. So I decided to come and do something about it. You did, huh? Yep. So now you got your chance to take me. I'm counting three. Then we draw and shoot, understand? Oh, see here, Bullet. One. Take cover, men. There's going to be shooting. Two. Bullet. You're noted for your quick draw and straight shooting. If you Get shoot ready, me, Connor. You're a killer in the note. Three. Oh. Matt Bullen shot down the sheriff. Why, he drew like lightning. The sheriff didn't have a chance. No. A few days later, the leading businessmen of Dry Gulch met at the general store. Jed Stevens, the banker, was talking to them. Men, you all know what happened to Sheriff Connor. And you all know he's the third sheriff that the outlaw Matt Bolin has killed off. The problem now is, are we going to appoint a new sheriff for this town? And if so, who will be willing to take it? Well, not me, Jed. You can count me out. I'm not signing my death warrant yet. Nobody in town's able to face Bolin. Well, that's just where we stand, then. Nobody will consider being appointed sheriff. And Dry Gulch is left without a lawman. Things are liable to get out of hand without someone to keep law and order hereabouts. Yes, that's right. Oh, wait, here comes a telegraph operator with a message for somebody. 
What have you got there, Joe? Got a reply to the telegram you sent to St. Louis, Mr. Stevens, from Sheriff Connor's son, Ted. What? Give it here, Joe. Hmm. What's he say about the killing, Jed? Why? Is he going to come out here to dispose of the sheriff's property? Yeah. Wait, hold on, Abby. Hold on now. I'll read to you what Tad Connor says in his telegram. <clears throat> Listen now. I'm shocked to hear of Dad's death. Leaving for Dry Gulch at once by railroad. If sheriff's job is by appointment, please consider me to take Dad's place long enough to get his killer. That'll be good, I tell Tad Connor. He don't know what he's asking. Bowling will get him, too. Well, let him try it anyhow. Wait, just, just a minute now. A good many of you don't even remember Tad Connor. He went to St. Louis five years ago. He was just 20 years old then. And a darn nice young fella, too. He could handle guns about as well as his dad. But that's not good enough to go up against Matt Bowling. Maybe he'd be luckier than his father was, Mr. Stevens. Of course, if we're going to scare him off by telling him what he'd be up against... Oh, let Tad have the job. Yeah. Don't anybody tell him about Matt's quick draw and all. we we got to have somebody. Like Joe says, Tad might have luck. Uh, yeah, it don't might. seem right not to warn him, though. He's been east over five years. He'd be sort of a tenderfoot sheriff. Maybe so. But he'll be sore enough at Bowling to go after him, which is more than anyone else would have the nerve to do. <laughs> well, all right, then. When Tad gets here, we'll appoint him sheriff like he wants. But between you and me, I have a feeling we're signing his death warrant. Yeah. Tad will end up just like his father did, the victim of one of Matt Bowling's guns. <laughs> When Tad Connor finally arrived in Dry Gulch, a committee of townsmen met him at the station. Well, men, there's the train from St. Louis. Tad will be getting off in a minute. We better give him the sheriff's badge before he meets somebody who'll tell him the truth about Matt Bola. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. But I still think... Oh, there he is now. Come on, come on. Is that him? Oh, Tad! Tad Connor! Well, thank you, Stevens. Sure, I'm glad to see you again, sir. It's sure good to see you too, Tad. I won't take time to do any introducing right now. You can meet these men later. Oh, that's all right. Did you get my telegram? Sure did, sure did. That's why we're here right now, to meet you. This is a committee that's come to give you this... this badge, Tad. The one your father wore. Yeah, sure, badge. Uh, well, golly, Mr. Stevens. Thanks for appointing me, Sheriff. All of you. Getting the hombre who killed Dad is the least I can do for him. Yeah, we know right. just how you feel, Tad. There. Now you're Sheriff of Dry Gulch. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations, Tad. Thanks, oh, thanks a lot. Congratulations to me. I'm a little rusty with a gun, but I'll get back into it enough to round up the coyote that... that shot Dad. Sure you will, Connor. You can bet we're all rooting for you here in Dry Gulch. Yes, all of us are. Come on. We'll all go up to the cafe and celebrate the appointment of our new sheriff. No, a man... That afternoon, Tonto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, returned to their camp in the hills outside of Dry Gulch after a trip to town. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Easy, Scott. Easy. Well, Tonto, what's going on in town? A young fella, Tad Connor, son of sheriff who get killed by Matt Bourne, come in on train. Oh? Uh, some men meet him at station, make him sheriff right away. You say they appointed Tad Connor sheriff in his father's place? Isn't that right? Hmm. Wonder if Tad knows what type of man Bolin is and how quick he is with a gun. Well, me hear men talking for them see Tad get off train. Them say they make him sheriff quick before him find out about Matt Bolin. I see. Tad's been east for some time. He's a tenderfoot at the game of being a sheriff out here. And that's right. Him get shot by Bolin like father get shot, maybe. It's not fair for those men not to warn him. I guess they couldn't get anyone else to take the job. Not right. Maybe him give up badge when him find out Kimasabi. Not if he's anything like his father, Tonto. Connor was a proud man. I feel sure once his son Tad has taken that badge, he won't want to appear yellow by turning it in. But him not have chance against Bola. Yes, yes, I know. Tonto, I'm going to disguise myself as a cowboy. And we'll both go to town and keep our eyes open in case Bolin shows up. All right, come on. Help me fix the disguise. Ah. 
Meantime, that afternoon, one of Matt Boland's men arrived at his hideout shack. Who oh, there? Who? Oh, Who? Oh, steady. <laughs> Brings you back from town so soon, Bert. I got news, Matt. <laughs> well, you hear this hot one. <laughs> well, a young Aubrey came in on the train this morning, and his name's Tad Connor. Tad Connor? Yeah. He's the son of the sheriff you gunned down in the cafe. But the payoff is this. He's been appointed the new sheriff. <laughs> appointed as the new sheriff, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear he's sort of a tenderfoot with a gun. Been working in St. Louis for several years. Fact is, he telegraphed and asked to be appointed so he could round up the hombre who shot his father, meaning you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a hot one. Guess he wants to die with his boots on like his old man did, Yeah. Huh? <laughs> hey, when are you going to meet up with him, Matt? I don't know yet. Did they tell him about me before they gave him the badge? <laughs> That's a funny part of it. They didn't. They were afraid if he knew how you could handle guns, he'd back out. So they met him at the station and put the badge on him pronto. <laughs> yeah, he's found out by now, though, I bet. The men at the cafe will tell him. Yeah, maybe he'll turn in his badge when he does find out. He better if he wants to stay alive. Well, seeing as how he's young and more or less of a tenderfoot, I'll give him a chance to stay alive. Hey, what do you mean by that? Uh, I'm not going soft or anything like that. What I mean is I'll give him a chance to back down and turn in his badge. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody will say he's yelling, he'll have to leave town. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Even though there isn't any other hombre in Dry Gulch should take the job. Hey, what are you planning to do? Tonight I'll print a note. Then we'll take the gang right through town, and as we pass the cafe, I'll toss it in. Hey, what are you going to say in that note? I'll let you read it after I get it printed up. Go tell the men to be ready for a ride to town after supper. That evening, the men of town were gathered in the cafe. At the back and keeping to themselves were Tonto and the Lone Ranger, who was disguised as a cowboy. They listened intently to the general conversation. Well, I guess Tad Connor's going to keep his badge, even though he's found out what he's up against. Yep, Tad's got courage, all right. But he sure looked kind of sick when he heard about Matt Boland. Yeah, uh, he's not too quick on the draw. Well, he should have been told ahead of time. Tad's too proud to give up now. Well, I, for one, wouldn't think he's yellow if he did give back his badge. Trouble is, Matt Boland's got us all buffaloed in this town. Yeah, 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 Matt and his true. gang just about run things around here. I guess we'll just have to admit he's got us all licked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, something's happening outside. Must be Matt and his gang riding through town. Maybe he's come to get the new sheriff now. We better take the cover. Look there. They threw something through the window. Well, I'll see what it is. What is it? Hold a note. It's got writing on the outside. It says, for Sheriff Connor. Better read what's inside. No, let's take it to the sheriff's office and let him read it for himself. Come on, let's go. Come on, boys. Let's go along, Toto. I'd like to know what's in that note. Ah. A few minutes later, Tad Connor, seated at his desk in the sheriff's office, looked up as the crowd entered. Uh, what's happened? I went to the door when that gang rode through, but they didn't stop. They threw this note through the window of the cafe. It's for you, Sheriff. Here. Ah, note for me, huh? What's it say, Tad? Read it out loud. Let's hear it. Uh, all right. Sheriff, this is to give you a chance to give up your badge and get out of town. But if you still want to play sheriff, then I'll meet you at noon tomorrow on Main Street and you can die with your boots on, like your old man did. Signed, Matt Bowen. Well, Ted, what do you aim to do? I guess the only thing for you to do is to turn in your badge, Sheriff. You're kind of rusty on shooting, and Matt's quick and deadly with a gun. Better do that. I, I'll have to think it over. I'll tell you in half an hour just what I'm going to do. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After Tad Connor had read Matt Bolin's note and said he wanted to think it over, the crowd of men left his office as the young sheriff sat with his head in his hand staring at the top of his desk. Tad didn't notice that two men had not left, and he was startled when the Lone Ranger, still disguised as a cowboy, spoke to him. The men in town would understand if you decide not to face Matt Bullen, Sheriff. Oh, I thought everyone had left. My Indian friend and I wanted to talk to you, so we stayed. You've heard of Matt's reputation, of course. Yes. Yes, I have. But I... I think I would have taken my father's badge anyway. I see. I admire your courage. Thanks, mister. Does that mean, then, that you're going to face Bullen tomorrow noon? I feel that I have no choice. I'd be yellow if I didn't. No one else would think so. Dad wouldn't have backed down. That's right. I'm sure he wouldn't. Hey. Hey, who are you, anyway? Let's say I was a good friend of your father's, and I'd like to do what I can to help you. Doesn't look like anyone can help me. I know the cards are stacked against me, but I'll have to go through with it tomorrow. Why wait until tomorrow, Ted? Oh, what do you mean? I think perhaps you and I could shame some of the townsmen into forming a posse tonight. Posse? Yes. I'm sure Tonto, my Indian friend here, could follow the trail left by Bullen and his gang. Mm, That's right. They're moonlight out. But what good would that do? From what I hear of Bullen and his gang, the posse and us would be wiped out most likely. That Bullen has everybody in town buffaloed because of the way he can draw fast and shoot straight. I know. The rest of his gang are no better shots than a good many men in town. If we take them by surprise at their hideout, I think we could capture Matt and the gang. Well, I... Bolin's so sure that he has everybody afraid of him that I doubt if he'd have guards posted. Huh? What do you say? But if I don't actually face Bolin, everybody will think I'm... We'll discuss that part of it later, Ted. Come on. Let's go talk some men into forming the posse. Uh... Well, all right. Yeah, I don't know why I give in to your plan like this. But the way you talk sort of gives me confidence. Let's get going. A short time later, Tad, with the Lone Ranger in his cowboy disguise, stood before the men at the cafe. Tad was speaking. Men? Men, this hombre here has the idea that we can trail Matt Boland's gang to their hideout and capture them once and for all. He's talked me into trying it, if I can get enough to form a posse. Well, uh, posse. the last posse that went after Boland and his gang got wiped out almost. I don't hanker for one of Matt's bullets. No, Just a minute, men. Matt Boland has terrorized this town and the vicinity for some time. No one in business here, no rancher with cattle to raise, feels safe. As long as that gang's at liberty. That's true. Now, Bolin is proud of the fact that he has you all scared. He rode right into town. Came right into this cafe and shot down Sheriff Connor. Now he plans to put on another show. By meeting that sheriff's son, Tad Connor. So that he can shoot him down. Well, Tad's a fool to say he'll go through with it. Yeah, he ought to give up being sheriff and leave. I guess that's what most of you would do. But Tad has courage. Something that seems to be lacking in this town. Now, Tad Connor's willing to try to get that gang tonight. If enough of you have the nerve to follow him. I'm beginning to think none of you have. Do you intend to go along, mister? Yes. My Indian friend will follow their trail to the hideout. Uh, I'm banker in Dry Gulch, as you all know. And that gang has robbed my bank twice. By thunder, if Tad and this cowhand here has the nerve to try to run down the bowling gang... I'll go along with him. Good for you, Jed. I'll join you. Well, there are two who are willing. Are the rest of you cowards? That's strong talk, mister. That's right, it is. <laughs> All right. Prove that I'm wrong by joining the posse. All right. I'll go along. Me too. Good. Get your horses and meet Tad and me in front of the sheriff's office in ten minutes. Right. <laughs> After leaving the sheriff's office, the posse rode along in silence. Tad Connor, with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, rode in the lead. 
The Lone Ranger glanced at the tense, set young face beside him. Then he spoke in a low tone. Stop them now, Tad. Tell them the plan. Uh, all right. Rain up, everybody. Now, we're getting near to Boland's camp. We have reason to believe that they won't have guards posted. Wait, everybody. Listen. I, uh... I... Tell them, Ted. I'm going to ride on ahead a bit. A stranger here is willing to ride along with me. We, uh... That is, I'll find Boland's cabin and try to take him by surprise. Better not try it, Ted. He'll gun you down, that's what. That's right. Oh, wait a minute. I, for one, have confidence in the plan Tad is following. The rest of you ride along. When you hear shooting, come in fast and round up the gang. You ready, Ted? Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. Get up there. You ride with the posse, Tonto. Uh-huh. Come on, Silver. Now, we follow now. Get him up, Scout. Yeah. Yeah. Later in his shack, Matt Bolin was talking to his right-hand man, Bert. <laughs> I guess that note I tossed in the cafe scared the whole town to death. <laughs> yeah. Would have scared that young sheriff more, I'll bet. It's my opinion that he's packed up and ready to leave Dry Gulch right now. <laughs> we'll find out in the morning. If he hasn't given up his badge and left, I'll face him at noon and put on a show for the folks in town. <laughs> They'll see another sheriff drop with his boots on. Yeah, I gotta hand it to you, Matt. You got that town and all the people in it right in the palm of your hand. Yeah, that's right. We got most of the hombres there so scared they look the other way when we ride into town. It sure pays to be the quickest on the draw and the straightest shot in the territory, Matt. Someday soon we'll move in and take over, Dry Gulch. I'll set myself up as mayor and let you be sheriff, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll live respectable. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's a hot one. Say, Matt, I'm... wait, what the... Hey, look, Matt. Matt Borden stared at the open door. Faintly outlined outside the door was the figure of Tad Connor. Neither Matt nor Bert could see beyond him, where another tall figure stood. Reach, Bowen. I came here to get you. It's, it's Tad Connor, the young sheriff. So it is. All you'll get is this, Connor. Oh, my wrist. Oh. Holy cow, I can't believe it. Drop your gun, mister, or you'll get some of the same. Yeah, oh. sure. Yes, I better. All right, let's go in. That was a lucky shot, that's all. You're lucky it struck only your wrist, Bolin. We, we should have had guards posted, Matt. Yeah, they won't get out of here. The gang will be here after hearing that shot. Yeah, then both of them will get plenty of lead. Hey, hey, what's that? That's my posse. They've surrounded the camp, and they're cleaning up on that gang of yours. Matt, I didn't think those armies in town had the nerve. They got back their nerve, and they found they had a courageous leader for a sheriff. Move, move, move. Steady there, boy. The posse round them all up, Sheriff. Yep, and I see you got Matt Bowling. Good going. Golly, Sheriff. We never thought it could be done. A couple of them tried to ride away, but we got them. Man alive, I'll sure have news to send over that telegram when I go back. I don't savvy how this happens. I drew quick as lightning, but somehow that, that young Sheriff was faster. By a thunder, Tad's no tenderfoot after all. No. That's right. Can't say he's the tenderfoot Sheriff like we've been calling him. No, no. right. sure Tad, your father would be proud of this. Mighty proud, I can tell you. He sure would. To think you did what nobody else has been able to do. Outgun Matt Bolin. That's right. Tad's a wonder. Well, he's been holding out uh, on us. Just a minute, everybody. I guess there's something you ought to know about all this. They already know you've captured Matt Bolin, Tad. There's no reason to say any more about it. Oh, I know. It's but... enough for them to know they've got a sheriff who has courage. Because of that courage, the Matt Bolin gang has broken up for good. Just forget what you were about to say. Thanks, mister. I want you to know how much I appreciate what you've done. Thanks. I guess my Indian friend is waiting outside of the others, so I'll leave. Adios, Sheriff Connor and... Oh, oh mister, uh, wait just a minute, will you? What is it, Sheriff? I, uh, I have something I want to say to you before you leave. All right. Step outside the door with me. Well, Ted... What is it you want to say to me? Well, mister, like I said, I, I don't know how to thank you for what you did. The way you stood behind me in the doorway and shot over my shoulder so they'd think I did the shooting. You proved yourself, Ted. Even if you couldn't have outshot Matt Boland. But that's just it. Everybody thinks I did. They don't know it was you who did that shooting. It's better to let them think that, Ted. Believing that you've become a crack shot will keep others from going against you. 
but you deserve the credit. The credit won't do me any good, but it will help you. Let the matter rest, Han. Promise you won't say anything about it to anyone. Well, I... All right. Good. You'd better get back inside now. Adios. Adios, mister. And thanks again. Uh, there's something familiar about that hombre who just left, but I can't place him. Yeah, I feel that way about him, too. Well, you'll have enough time while you're waiting in jail for your trial to think about where you met him before. Shall we take him away now, Sheriff? Yeah, yeah, take him away. All right, Bullen. On your way. You too. Come on. Well, Tad, there goes your friends, the cowboy and the Indian. I sure admire the way he talked up to the men at the cafe this evening. Sure put the spunk right back into him. Yep, and the way Tad acted helped a lot, too. We're sure proud of you, Tad. Right. Thanks. I wish I could always prove myself to you as I seem to do tonight. You will. Don't worry. There's just one thing I'd like to know very much. What's that? Well, I haven't any idea who that cowboy is who backed me up when I came here after bowling. <laughs> I can tell you that, Sheriff. You can? Who is he? Well, by putting two and two together, figured it out. I seen that Indian before, riding with a masked man near Pecos. With a masked man? Yeah. And I'm sure that tall, well-built hombre, posing as a cowboy, was the one who usually wears a mask. He called his horse Silver, too. Holy smoke. Dad told me about him once. I should have known. He must be the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>